Research. Forget Market all that research. R &D, whatever you said. Well, one one person here is a creative director and one person isn't. So. <laughs> I, <laughs> and, yeah. and if you own. I'm a creative director of my Instagram. Listen, no, you're I, not. I heard Kevin Hart in his new yeah, stand up really talk about him being dumb and how successful dumb has been for him. Yeah. And it works. So you can be smart all you want. I'll take dumb if it's going to make me successful. <laughs> Listen, look. I'm not, look, I think I'm dumb is, I think, I think dumb has worked out for a lot of people. A, a lot. lot of people. I think dumb has worked out more than really being really, really smart. Raise yeah. your hand if dumb has worked out for you. <laughs> it's Channing. Oh, ah, there we go. Yes. My, my dad used to call yeah. us super stupid when we were young. I never heard of it before, wow. but he used to Man. say, y'all are super stupid. stupid. I was like, how you get super <laughs> stupid? But now as you got older, as you got older, you understand it, <laughs> yeah. right? Like you have those young boys come on in the team. They're like, how's the rook? He's like, Man, he's super stupid. Like he's super stupid. He's like super. he's like, but we try and tell him what to do and and try and help him out and guide him. And he's just like, no, I'm gonna do it a, a stupid way, like a right. super stupid like, way. You ain't never seen it done that way. No, yeah, yeah like yeah. you've been in the league 13 years. I'm gonna do something you ain't never seen before. <laughs> like, but no, yeah, that's 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 super stupid. Before people uh, claim us as the super stupid clan, yeah. um, we don't like to use wait. the word clan around <laughs> here. <laughs> oh, Allie. <laughs> <laughs> Don't edit that. <laughs> Don't edit. Please That's edit. just funny. That's just funny. We just. Okay. Dwayne, what's going on in your. <laughs> now you guys are all messed up for that. Y'all are super stupid for that. <laughs> there we go. There we Dwayne, go. Uh, before. We have so much to talk about. We talked about. Like, there's so many directions that we could go and mm -hmm. talk to you. So okay. we want to hit the nuts and bolts first. The more. Yeah. You know, bolts current, bolts. what's going on in the world. The Miami Heat okay. just won a championship. Do you get a ring? What champ, huh? No, they, they didn't did, win a I'm championship. <laughs> Super stupid. <laughs> Super, see, we got it rattled. We got it no. rattled right now. You know, let me tell you, that's that Shannon Blanc. That's that Wade Wine. Everybody. Is that Wade that's Wine? You, oh, okay. Right okay. They, got her they did not. Okay. They did not. Tifa got her. I actually, I actually work for the Lakers, so it was she kind was. of a. But you didn't pick board. up We're on in that. In the Laker building right now, <laughs> right. and she's like, so the, the, the Miami go. Heat just Here won a championship. Go. Do you get a ring? But do you get a ring if when when the Heat do win their next championship? Uh, I don't know. Well, y'all asking me like I'm. I have some. I don't know. Because every time we hear about the Miami he Heat, we hear about LA. it's like it's like the middle name. Jimmy told me. At some point in the bubble, he was going to give me a ring. That was way before that. He yeah, did. yeah. That was like before the playoffs started. He was oh, like, he yo, once I win this ring. To like Uber rings to carry yo. your sleep. You <laughs> <laughs> talking about the ring you got for the Cavs. That's all you was doing yep. was sleeping. Oh, no. Let's I saw my iPad. It's sleepy out there. I saw my iPad from the Cavs. What you mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, they gave, they gave us an iPad, like, for all of our playoff stuff. Like, oh, like, yeah, yeah, Richard. What? Do you still have it, too, Channing? Yo, you still have it? <laughs> yo. Channing still got yo, the iPad. You know still have, look, 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 look at that. What are the chances? Yo, you're supposed to get that back. No, no, no. no. no what do you mean got, it's a fine? Yo, that's got Miami, data. That's a fine. No, that's well, got data. Well, of course it is. No, not when you trade, not when they trade me because of you. <laughs> we'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. Thanks, man. No, Thanks. let's just get there no, now. Please, let's just get there now. Yo, seriously, though, that's the exact same thing. It's got data. That's why you can't give no, it back. Let me tell you what I still have, okay? Yeah. In 2010, I don't know if they started it then, but in 2010, through free agency, they yeah. gave out iPads. That was like the big thing. Like, they'll show up to your house, whatever team that was recruiting you, yeah. and they'll leave an iPad. Yeah. I still have all the iPads. Oh, as you should. Yeah. As you should. I still have all of them. Mine has the what? data, so I can stream movies on it, and I'm like, <laughs> they're like, you've exceeded your data. It's like, don't care. <laughs> Do you know how many people <laughs> would literally die for an iPad? And you guys are just... Whoa, oh. whoa, 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 whoa. An iPad Pro. <laughs> Right. Um, can we Listen, can we travel they back? My stuff off, and I called them and say, like, "Hey, yo, you can't turn this off." Did I they turn this. it off? <laughs> they turned, yeah, they turned, they it turned off. my data off. I called them like, "Hey, yo, come on, I still need this. Like, I might come back. Obviously not. I'm up here watching Hulu, Netflix, <laughs> Amazon Prime, right? what okay. everything." Okay, so at one point in time, we all were together. That was what 2017, yeah, 2018 mm -hmm. in the fall when you walked into that training camp in Cleveland, and these two were there. 
<laughs> what went through but your first mind? First of all, Richard didn't even, he was in training camp, but he wasn't doing nothing. Oh, like, no, no, he no. Went, Richard wasn't doing nothing in training camp, and Chenny neither. Neither one of these guys were doing anything in training camp, especially Richard, though. I've no. never seen nobody stretch on the sideline <laughs> as much as Richard <laughs> and to not play. He didn't even get in practice. No, I, you know what it is? I learned I learned it probably around, around year 13. Now, it's different when, I, like, I know the difference between, like, Miami, San Antonio, like, places that, like, are really watching. But once I got there, I learned that, like, I only have to jump and jump in the drill one time per right, right. whole thing. Oh, you get smarter as yeah, you get older. Yeah, oh, as you get sure. older, you get smarter. It's like if, not, like, if you're doing the running drills or whatever, but if you're doing, like, defensive drills, as long as I get in one time, mm -hmm. I'm good. Because then the coach can see they saw me, yeah. like, other players And when you get me. in, you got to be loud, too. You yeah. got to be oh, talking. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then go sit. That's what yeah. they did. The whole training camp. These two right here. <laughs> One drill per. per. Hey, that's it. That's it. That's hey, all you got to do. Every time, I would be like, hey, hey, uh, Tristan, let me come get you. He'd be like, hell no. I said, all right, next one. Because like, guys don't never want to come out neither, especially no. when you're no. And I'd yeah. be like, cool. Oh, I, t I, I would be cool. You know what it was, though? Like, I remember when you remember this, too. When we were all younger players, we used to step in and help the vets out. Like, yo, yo, I got this. Get out. Just, yeah, yeah, get sure. out. I mean, look, because we're bored when you're 25, though. You want to run more. So you're like, ah, here, just get out. I got you. I got you. Oh, th thanks, young fella. And then <laughs> I expect, I'm not asking, I expect right. the younger players to do it. Like, hey, just just oh, come get me. Oh, Eddie Jones would, like, Eddie Jones would just put, you had to go. Like, Eddie Jones would, like, He'll sit in line. We'd be doing a running drill. He'll come back. Shoe. And he'd be like, yo, go again. You need to get in shape. You need to get in. Like, he would just be sitting chilling. I was yeah. like, that's when I get a bit, when oh, I become yeah. a vet, yeah. I'm going to do the same thing. Speaking of getting in shape, we need to bring up this. Um, but I first want, you just gave your observation of Richard. He wasn't doing any no. training camp. No. What was Channing doing? Shit. Same thing. Same? Yeah, they weren't doing shit together. We were, we were, we were, we were comic I relief. 20 miles a day. Okay, so speaking pie. of miles, did you guys know that there's someone on this podcast right now that used to tape their Apple Watch on their wrist during games to count steps. Channing. Channing. <laughs> Channing. Yes, Channing. <laughs> it had to be Channing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I mean, were I you that desperate? Step. No, but I was so bored. So my mind, I'd be like, all right, if I'm not going to play, I was warming up dumb hard. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was, <laughs> like, I'm like, then I was doing lifting, and I was just staying in shape and keeping my mind ready because I was like, Okay, Tristan got to play. Kevin got to play. Braun got to play. Jeff Green got to play. All these people got to play. I didn't play really until we won 20 in a row, and then they traded me. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But <laughs> like, I really didn't play till a bunch so of guys you got still hurt. Feel away about that trade? I see. I do. I, I was not very happy. Up next on Road Trippin'. Once you get to the end of your career, you got to be honest with yourself. Okay, yeah. where am I at with my talent? Right yeah, now. like Danny Green. <laughs> Way, the funniest thing about his time in LA, the, the entire, there are two, a couple of funny jokes that we told. The two weeks he was there. The two yeah. weeks he was there. One of Here. them was like, you know, Luke Walden, head coach at the time, he was like, hey, because they played together at Arizona. So he was like, hey, Channing, just, you know, when we're around the young players, I just need, you know, I know we're boys and all, but I need you to do it. It's like, cool. He said, like, the second video session, he walked in, Lukey Dukey, what's up? What's up? And then Luke just looked at him like, that is so Channing. Dude. And it's like, because you know him, you can't be mad at him, but you're just like, God. all the all the young boys were looking at him, Lukey Dookie. Lukey Dookie. Okay. Okay. Yo, listen, here's the problem. I got there and I played, but I was like, yo, I'm hurt. So let me figure this out. And then it was just like, we were like five games from the playoffs. And I said, oh, this is it. We ain't going to make this. Like, based on this, right? We ain't making this. Yeah. And so me, I went in a full, like, here you go, guys. Like, very, you know, um, Rob Brook Lopez was going to play. Uh, Julius Randall was going to play. And so I was like, okay, this is young fella time. Every team that I've been on that wasn't going to make the playoffs is young fella time. So I basically was like, all right, y'all go ahead. Just let me know where you need me. Zubak was going to play. So I was way down the list. So why does it, seem, right, why does it seem like you're way down the list on every team you're on? That's like the second time you've done that lineup. Uh, I mean, basically, my whole career barbecue I played behind an all-star. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, look, buddy. <laughs> buddy. I'm a specialist, and that specialist did not include defense, right? So, <laughs> my job. Oh, Channing. Listen, and I said this. This is a stat. While I played for the Cavs, this is the least amount of double teams in the history of Cavs uh, history. The history of Cavs history? <laughs>
<laughs> you drew the least amount of double teams? No, you... there was no double teams. You couldn't double team. We absolutely punished them. Three-pointers, layups, <sighs> floor spaces, everything. It should be a stat. As D. Wade, we rejuvenated his career. We put him <laughs> on that block, right? We put him on the block. We won, uh, t- we won 20 out of 22 games, D. Wade. We ran one play. We threw it to you if there was a little guy. And if there was a big guy, we'd do that little curl play for Jeff to get a little right-hand boom or Kyle Corbett to get a three. Or you would just shoot your turn around. <laughs> uh, shoulder. And it worked. We figured it out. We figured it out. you 100% correct. And then we got traded. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we got we traded. Were, we were best team in the NBA. The next thing you know, we lost two in a row. Hey, we got hey, traded. Channing, at least you made it. Channing, at least you made it to – uh, to play games because basically D Wade came in and I'm not gonna lie this was really funny right we were all having fun we were having a great time and I remember talking to Allie a bunch of that I, uh, when you came in and I was like oh dope D Wade and I started looking around and I started I was like <laughs> I called my agent and I was like hey something ain't adding up here <laughs> I was like, like something ain't adding up here. I was like, we got a lot of roster spots. And, you know, the crazy thing that that it wasn't, obviously, I understood. Like, we've been doing this business for long enough. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, this going to suck, right? And the funny thing about it was that I had – David Griffin was the GM at the time. And he was like, Richard, if you come back on a, after we won the championship, if you come back on a minimum salary, I'll keep you on a minimum salary forever. He, he was like, I would have you be the Udonis Haslam. You can stay here till you're 47. I don't, I don't care. And I was like, no, nah, that's not going to be good enough. I see this salary cap going up. You got to give me a little bit more. So they gave me a little bit more. But boy, did that screw him when it came to the tax? Because it was like, oh. all, I kept seeing like reports like, yes, by trading Richard Jefferson, they would save twelve million dollars. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not twelve. Yeah. I'm not twelve million dollars good right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, you gotta know it. That's the thing. You gotta know once you get in the in, once you get to the end of your career, you gotta be honest with yourself. Okay, yeah. where am I at with my talent? Right yeah, now? like Danny Green. Like <laughs> oh. Danny Green ain't unpacked. He ain't done nothing. I'm not trying to be mean to Danny. I'm saying I had the same thing happen. I got, I left the team that we won a championship. I was like this leading scorer off the bench in the finals. Then the next, the next year, uh, D Wade comes in, and it was like even though that I had performed and done my job, like for numbers and and roster and salary cap reasons, they traded me to Atlanta. I laughed at them and said I ain't coming. And then after that, I went to Denver. So it was How do like. I think Bron felt. Bron. He was fine. He had but, his uh, boat buddy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what did you call him? His boat buddy? Boat. What, did, what is he? Is he saying? He's saying boat. He, we're, uh, this is, this is I your guy. This is your guy. This I, is, I, can't, I can't hear him. Here, I can't my, hear him. But. Boat. Yeah. <laughs> You didn't, you didn't want to leave Miami. You didn't want, no. like, but sometimes, like, business is business. I didn't want to leave Chicago. Yeah. But they Aww. traded Jimmy, and business was business. Business I, was business. I, actually, I'm from Chicago. I enjoyed my one year there, and I was looking uh, forward to the second suburbs. <laughs> what? <laughs> because, <laughs> you're from the suburbs. I, I, okay. You're right. You're right. Don't, hey, don't let the private school mess with you. You're right. It okay. doesn't matter. Even if you, you're right. like, he went to private school, prep school. Like, don't let him fool you. I did not go to prep school. It was this. It's a college pre- preparatory. Preparatory. Okay, Dwayne. Did not prepare you to speak? No, I didn't go there. That's why <laughs> I couldn't afford I, it. Ali, how do you ever get any work done? I don't. With this, so. this is where I need to like step is, up and play is, my role. This is the work. This is y'all the, should it do is a work. and butthead like remake or like. <laughs> with, oh. with hey, creative too. director. Creative director, yeah. come on. I got you. Up. Okay. Okay. Back to yeah, 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 it, yeah. creative director. Okay, yeah. so you're a creative director. You're. I got uh, a lot of titles, Ali. Don't tell us them all. Nothing. Let's let's get into it. They don't mean nothing. They just titles. Okay, no, I, I don't. <laughs> I actually do not believe that for a second because you have a game show. I do. I do. Did you know that, Channing? Oh, what is this? What is this? <laughs> tell us. Tell us about Listen, it. Let's Channing, talk first about... of all, you're going to be the. You better not be no Connect Four junk either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a game show. Huh? So, all right. So, and okay, if you okay, say that he's about to be on it, I'm. No, he's gonna I, okay. be he's gonna be a, he's gonna be sitting on the couch with some wine with his kids around watching the game show when it come out. That he's that kind of he's a game show dude. Look at him. Is it on cable? That's what happens when you live <laughs> in yep, Portland, Oregon. Cable. What show? TBS. It's gonna be it'll be on TBS. Ah. It's called The Cube. You have never seen it because it's, it's the first the time we've done it here. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Let okay. me tell you about the okay. game show. Please. All right. So the yeah, game show me. has been in the UK for now twelve years. Oh. And Warner Media, who you know I'm a part of, they adopted it here. They wanted to bring it to the states. 
and uh, we already had conversations about me possibly hosting the game show. So when the conversation came to me, it was like, hey, it'll be in L.A., you know, you can go do a couple hours, host, and then come back get home. Get out of the house. Yeah, I'm like, you know what? I get out of the house for a couple hours. I can come home, see the family still. Cool. Then COVID happened, and it changed everything. So mm. we ended up shooting it in Atlanta um, for 10 days, and I had 16-hour uh, days. Ooh. And, <laughs> and you did done multiple every episodes every multiple, day? I, I had to try to get sleepy. at least three episodes a show, but I'm the host. I'm also doing the promos. I'm also doing, like, I'm doing everything. So I was like, oh. I th this is training. I felt like I was in training camp all over again. But I you're was... the creative director. Don't you get to choose? No, none of that. <laughs> no, none of that. I'm, I am not. I'm just the host, and I, I, I EP'd it, and I ended up being the host. But, like, for me, it was fun. Like, I, I grew up on game shows. Like, in Chicago, one of my favorite game shows was this show called The Bozo Show. And I used to watch it oh, every morning before terrible. I went to school. And, like, the one thing on The Bozo Show, they'll put, like, mm, five or six um, buckets, and you had to, you know, hit a ball in mm -hmm. each bucket. And that last bucket was the money bucket. And I always, like, I always used to think, like, one day, I'm going to get on this show, and I'm going to change my family. <laughs> I'm going to change my family. Right. From, from the Bozo <laughs> show. Yeah. And, you like, full circle. I'm on the show, and I'm hosting the show to be able to um, change people's lives. You can, on our show, you can win up to $250,000. Know? Oh, my God, amazing. It's a lot amazing. of money yeah. to play uh, seven games. Well, to win seven games. If you win seven games on our show, you get to win $250,000. Do you put up your own money? No, no, that's that's net. Like the way my bank account is set up from retiring, <laughs> I'm on a budget. <laughs> Boy, you better okay. stop it right now. So, are you on a budget? Yeah, so, hell yes, I'm on a budget. Why? Well, why I can't be on a budget? You yeah. on a budget? Listen, you're just you got vice president. I'm working. I'm vice working president. nine to fives. I'm I'm making frappuccinos. Dog, at all you gotta do, honestly, this is what you need to do: get dressed up. Like, tell Lauren to get dressed up, take her out to a nice dinner, and just ask her to increase your allowance. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Channing, well, you're one of those guys that, uh, I feel like we interview with Channing, by the way. <laughs> were, you, were you one of those guys that when you got your NBA check, you gave it to your wife, and she gave you some money and said, go have fun? Ah, uh, hell no. And she took the rest? Hell. Yeah. Hell. She's like, uh, make it work. She's like, make it work. This ain't enough. Yeah. First of all, let's put a little bit more respect on Lauren's name. Lauren's the yeah. boss. Lauren's the yeah. 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 Lauren's yeah. the yeah. boss. As much as we're joking, we're just saying, like, yo, right. that's you a strong, awesome boss. woman that Channing has. Based on my wine budget, I definitely, definitely do my own stuff. <laughs> oh, right? Because I'm getting yelled at every month. Like, Channing, how much do you need to spend on wine? R and D. Research, Research and development. Develop. I got it. That's There's one thing you want to take away from this Channing episode. That's one thing learned in the wine industry is R and D. R &D. That's the one thing you've learned so far. Up next on Road Trippin', was there a moment during filming this game show that like for us to all hold on to, like a little teaser? Okay, so from the Bozo, the game show, what it's called? <laughs> cube. It's called the Cube. The Cube. Yeah, it's called the Cube. Cube, and it's coming out when? Uh, I don't know the exact date, but somewhere in the middle of next year. Middle okay. of next year? Yeah, middle of next year. How many year. episodes? Uh, I filmed, I don't know how many they're going to end up showing, but I filmed 19 episodes <gasps> in Dang 10 days. Yo. Wait, now, so if you filmed, then you have all of those contestants, right? Yeah. They could so you chop them, give them together. I mean, they? it just depends. You know, it's a show, so they gotta, you want to put your best shows forward. Okay. You know, all shows, just because I filmed 19, I mean, all of them was good, so it came out. <laughs> it takes a while. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah. they got to go through it and, you know, put it together. They're going to they gonna make it look nice and neat. But I filmed 19 episodes in 10 days, and I was like, oh, so this is what retirement is really like. This is what work is really like. Really work, actual work. This not, is what actual work is really like. I just like. need to keep my body tight. <laughs> you just got to yeah. keep it strong. And I was like, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Before we move on to the wine collaboration, um, you obviously have your bottle of wine. Channing his, has his newest bottle of wine. You see it right there. Um, I do want to ask, can you give, like, a little snippet? Like, it, was there a moment during filming this game show that, like, for us to all hold on to? Like, a little teaser? Like, something that was really awesome? Like, a moment? Well, it, it was awesome. The, the thing that's awesome about it is, yeah, it's a game show. It's simple games. So the name of the show is The Cube. So everything happens in The Cube. It's a glass cube, and all these games happen. So, Richard, here's a game. Um... You know, I get on this end, turn my back, and let's say you are a bucket. Yeah. I got to throw it backwards and make it in the bucket. Yeah. Okay. If you make oh, it, one of those. you win. Yeah. Okay. You move on to the next round, which yeah. is, that means money. If you miss it, you lose a life. Okay. okay. You get nine lives in these games. So okay. you miss it, now you got eight lives. Okay. Uh -huh. But you can't come, once you go in the cube, you can't come out. So you can burn all nine lives trying to Try to get back, that one thing. Right? Ooh. So it's a simple game, but it's a hard game because, you know, it's, it's easy to throw it backwards and miss it. So... 
what, being a part of it and watching these families and like them coming on with their stories and their reasons why being on the show and what they wanted to do. A lot of people wanted to, you know, enrich the communities. They wanted to, you know, some people living the way they were living, you know, obviously COVID has, you know, struck the whole world. So you get to know their backstories as well. And then you know, you understand that, okay, this money is important, you know, for so many other reasons. So to watch a family win $50,000, you know, on a show, I mean, it, tears. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you, I saw, and it gets you emotional. You get invested into their story. Did and, you and cry? Time. I didn't cry, but, you know, inside, I was cried. warm and fuzzy. I warm, I understand. <laughs> you know I mean? understand. But the one thing I did learn about this show uh, with Americans is we go for it every time. <laughs> It'd be like, okay, listen. Okay, this game that's next, right? Let's say it's a game that's coming up next, and this game on average takes five lives to beat on average. You got two. You got two lives, and you got twenty thousand dollars. You can walk away right now with twenty thousand, or, or you, you can go inside that queue and try to play for fifty thousand. And I'm sitting there like they about to walk away and take the money. They be like, "We gonna go inside the queue." I'm like, "No, <laughs> wait, 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 no. Wait, 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 now, now, uh, we're not gonna turn this into a ethnic racial thing." <laughs> <laughs> but what if we were to break it down from like, <laughs> from like demographics, let's just say demographics, was there one demographic that was more apt to like, we're going for it yeah. versus, oh, no, we taking this money. Yeah, the alley de demographic this was more like, was we're going like, for it. Yeah. What, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> I'm just saying. The, yeah. the, you Girl, know, my, our demographic was more so like, you know what? Hey, I could do a lot with 20,000. I could do a lot, a lot with 20,000. 20, <laughs> <laughs> I could do a lot with 20,000 too, but why not? Yeah, I see, girl. I like see, to live on the edge. Said. You know what my you know, mama would have said to me? You know what people I watch, like, I mean, it's a great show. You know how many people, I, 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 you know what? I Is hate when gone? people do this. I hate when people do this, when they put this back in the refrigerator, when it's like, you know, a little orange juice left. I'm just going to go ahead and finish this. <laughs> okay. It's yeah. yours. Yeah, you brought it. Uh, but, yeah, so I just did that, and so it was cool. You know, when you retire, as we all know, when you retire, you try to find, like, something that's, like, you try to find your lane. Like, all right, what am I going to be good at? What can I be good at? Uh, where, where is someone going to pay me? Um, but also, too, like, you try to find something that gives you, like, some joy, yeah. you know? So for me, like, to host that show, like, even though it was hard, and I gotta t we got to talk about the schedule that they put me through. But overall, <laughs> like, I would do it again if the schedule was right because, like, it was fulfilling and was rewarding to watch, like, these families, like, win this kind of money, you know, on this show. So it was cool. So Jim, what, you got Oh, no, no, no. I was going to say it's, like, obviously, God rest, his, God rest his soul, but Alex Trebek and, like, Pat Sajak and Steve Harvey and all these guys, that's basically what they do. They, like, people don't understand. They record for, like, a week. They record like an entire season of Family Feud in like a week yeah. and they just like change their outfits and they have like 12 hour days. Mm -hmm. But you really, you make a, a uh, I don't know about your situation, but like those, though, like Alex Trebek making $15 million oh, yeah, to work uh, yeah. like two and a half weeks and do some yeah. promos. If, you know, it's a good gig if you I mean, can get I, it. Yeah, I'm not there yet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is my first time out the back. Yeah. So my, my money wasn't like that. But it's, it is something great, and it's something like with, you know, with the Cube, because it's been successful in the UK for 12 years. So, mm -hmm. you know, obviously everybody on our team is like, listen, you know, we got an opportunity with a great show. Hopefully we can get 10 years out of this, yeah. you know, and build, you know, and build really, build an empire, you know, for this show in the States. So we'll see. We'll see yeah. how it goes. Like, you know, like I told them, I said, I had an amazing time, but, like, we definitely got to talk on the schedule, schedule because I ain't built for it. I ain't built for 16-hour days. Did you ever have a moment About where you eight. walked in and you were like, do y'all know that I'm Dwayne Wade? No. Like, uh, first of all, I was nervous as, as, as hell, first of all, to do something like that. You know, you, know you can I mean? cuss. <laughs> <laughs> just out of nowhere just, in the middle of your story. Right, my mama might watch. You know what I mean? Let me, let me limit my cursing, all right, Channing? <laughs> you sit down in the basement where you were put. That's rodeo on road tripping. That's why they put you in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lauren, Lauren has the key, too. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren has the key. She put the fool by the door. <laughs> Yeah, she but no, no, she she makes him quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I quarantine 16 hours a day by myself. I just get to sleep on the couch. R and D, R and D. <laughs> so it was hard. <laughs> no, it was yeah. No, it was hard. I ain't even lie to you. You know what I mean? Like getting off. I mean, but obviously it's to be successful in sport. We had yeah. moments where it was hard. So it was just hard because I've never done it before. But, you know, once I got done, I felt accomplished. Like, 10 days on the grind to get a show done. Like I said, we filmed 19 shows in 10 days. Like, I felt accomplished. Walked yeah. away from there with my head up high, my feet hurting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, was hurting. What, what was the hardest part? Reading a prompter? Like, what, like, was that? Because, yo, that's something that even, like, for me, I've been two years out, and yeah. 
I've been in that like in the space of like learning how to read a prompter, yeah. different, you know, whether it's hosting something or just like doing my own stuff. Like you're trying to be expressive and read and like not like like sit there and focus. What was the hardest part that was like a random skill? that you now have a tremendous amount of respect for people that are in that space. Yeah, you said it, man. It's like, all right, so hosting is cool. Like, once you learn the game, you you know the rules and everything, you mm -hmm. can be personable with someone you can host. That's that's not easy, but that's cool. It's the, once the show over, okay, Dwayne, now the contestant just left, we need you to read 30 things to camera. We need you to turn like this, you know, watch them go out and now look at the camera and say, blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah. Ali and Richard are to have $20,000. Would they go for, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. that kind of read. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, we need more energy or we need this to be dramatic. Or we need, I'm like, I am not an actor. <laughs> okay. Like, you know what I mean? So I'm like, a creative director. I am not. So <laughs> like that was tough. And it would be like in between hosting shows, it'd be like, okay, we got to get 50 reads. You know, like all this stuff. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know, I didn't pay attention to the fine print. Because I don't remember seeing that I was gonna have to do 50 reads between each show, but it was like it was, but it was challenging, and you know, like everybody there was working longer hours than me. You got people who setting up early and they yeah. staying later, so we were all like pushing through together. It was like really like a family, you know. Yeah. I get it, like when people say it felt like a family, even though we couldn't touch each other, <laughs> it felt like a family. Like, listen, guys, listen, we on the 16th hour, my toe was probably bleeding, but we about to get through this. What you see, you got you you didn't switch up your shoes. You it didn't, didn't like, even matter if you stand up that stand long, that long, your feet start pulsating. Oh my, I, I still ain't got the feeling back on my big toe on my right side yet. <laughs> Talk but to I, me when you're wearing four inch heels and you do it for six, seven oh hours. Okay. No, I can't, no, we'll talk about it. Y'all yeah, so, are better than What are those um, things? Could, what are them new balances? Well, I, what are you talking we're about? We're talking about Channing. Can someone, can, that's these, that's these, oh, that's these Jimmy Butler's. That's these Lee Nees. You know you, what I mean? That's you the had Jimmy. the audacity <laughs> to rock Jimmy Butler's in the Lakers studio. Up next on Road Trippin'. You got these young guys that you're trying to take to NBA Finals versus LeBron James and Anthony <laughs> Davis. You and Jimmy, like that is, I, I respect that relationship, but it's like you bring him over to Lee. I'm not saying you, like obviously Lee Ning and the Miami Heat, <laughs> yeah. but like yeah. you. I'm not, the ones who pan him, yeah. I'm not, <laughs> well, the ones that are paying him. But not, okay, let's then let's talk about that. Cause I think that's that that's really, really dope in the sense that like it seems from a distance, and I'm gonna ask from like a fan standpoint of like you guys have a great relationship. He tries to credit you whenever he gets that opportunity. He was he talks about how instrumental you were to bringing him to the heat and really expressing to him is like, dude, I know your personality and how you compete. The Miami Heat is the organization you've been like searching for for yeah. the last bit. Like, what does that mean to you? Like, how did you guys establish that relationship? Yeah, I mean, you, Jenny, and you know, Richard, you understand this. When you come into the league or at some point in your career, if you have a great vet. It changes your life. Yeah, you know what I mean. It, it changes the way you look at life. It changes the things you do. So when I went to Chicago, um, you know, me and Jimmy latched onto each other right away. Obviously, we had a Marquette tie in the background, but we wasn't close. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I would go back at the time, I would play with those guys, but like we wasn't really close. And he played with the Bulls, and we had that Bulls Miami yeah. thing going on. But when I went there, uh, me and Jimmy got close, and Jimmy just was like, "Yo, I want to learn everything I can." And I gave Jimmy the game, right? Yeah. Everything I've learned from the vets before me, everything I learned from my experience, me and Jimmy sat down, and I just I got into Jimmy. I got I got I started to understand who he was. He wanted to play dominoes. Let's play dominoes. Yeah. You want to drink Hendrix? Okay, I don't drink it. But <laughs> drink gin. Like, you know what I mean? Like whatever Jimmy was into. The devil's Ooh. piss right there. Right, but we did it, and I and I got to know Jimmy, and I got to know what he bad. wanted for himself, and what he wanted was the same thing that I was doing. You know what I mean? He's like, I was like, what what do it look? What do success look like for you? He was like. <laughs> I said, All right, well, here you go. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then to his credit, man, obviously he's he's doing it his own way, but you know, he's taking some of the similar steps that I that I've done. And if it ain't broke, don't don't fix it, right? He he has a blueprint of somebody that he, you know, can say that is a friend and a and a brother. And you know, he's he's blazing his own trail, but he's following a path that seems successful. Mm -hmm. And so I'm I'm happy for him, man. He's you know, he got into a great place with Miami. Um, you know, I love Jordan Brand. He loved Jordan Brand to sign with Lee Ning, and yeah. I signed with Lee Ning, and end up good for me. You know, mm -hmm. and so hopefully he has the similar success that I've had, and, and hopefully even more. Oh, that's awesome. Well, he got more money from the Heat than me already, but we're not going to talk. We're not going to talk about. Not going to talk about that. Not takes, career earnings. Takes sip. It's close.
Oh, right. you, know, you know, like a four year deal yeah. nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Wait yeah. a second, what? Well, oh, it's like back in the day, back in the day, like if you were making 15, like you were in the top like 5%. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You were in the top oh, 5%. So now they're making 30, 40, 50, 50 million a year. Million. Like back it's in like, the day. sorry, not sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, it's all good. I mean, we, that's what well, it the was generations before. Generations, like the dudes that do. were like right before us. Yeah. Like, think about that. Like, Scotty Pippen was winning all the champ. We saw that in uh, The Last Dance. Scotty Pippen was winning everything and as a nine time All Star making $2.1 $2. $2. $2. million. million. Yeah. Dollars. You know, but that was just the time. But that now, was, yeah. you know, like, but yeah, Jimmy, yeah, he probably make him more. He close. And his four year deal, he sounded he, he about 25 million away from <laughs> my career. Oh, well, he gonna get, he's, he's probably trying to get that extension already. Right. So, y'all wanna run this back a couple more times? <laughs> I'm cool. I, the one thing I learned about him, though, like during that entire run, that I actually, my respect level went up so, so high. It wasn't what he was doing between the lines, it was like the way in which he was handling the media. Mm. The things he would say, the way in which he carried himself. It was Channing's reconnecting. It was it was different. Mm. Like there's like a confidence to him that like what that surprised you. You knew that obviously. Like you understood that you saw that. Yeah. But like there was ways in which like he would answer some questions and it would just be like, like, we're gonna win game six because of this. Right. Or this is <laughs> and I'm just like, we're going to win? Like, wait, 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 you wait, you wait, 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 Right. And I think that's what I saw in Miami with him was that he was speaking from a leadership role. And then you would hear guys like Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero be like, yeah, well, Jimmy said right. that we're going to be all right. So yeah. we're going to be all right. right. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to be all right. It's like that was the that was the part that I noticed was just the leadership. He yeah. had turned from like proving himself and trying to lead like he did in Minnesota. But those guys weren't receptive to it because they weren't trying to win the same way he mm -hmm. was. Then going to Philly. You know, however that transpired, he was the most important player. You saw what happened when he left there. And then he goes to Miami, and there's a bunch of dudes that are like, we're looking for a leader. Right. And he spoke like a leader. He did. Right? Not arrogant, not, not like trash talk, but just very confident and matter of fact that we believe in each other. I've said that these guys are great. And it was just like, was that a transition that you saw from him? Or was it like, did you pick I, I up on like that also? I feel like that was like... Whoa. Yeah, no, I think we all watched the, the, the evolution of Jimmy Butler, right? Yeah. Okay, so even you. World. Yeah, I mean, okay. I've, I've, you know, like watching him from obviously Marquette to getting drafted. I remember when Jimmy got drafted. Jimmy got drafted the last pick in the first round. He yeah. was the 30th pick. And I remember thinking like, oh, man, dang, J good for Jimmy. Yeah, good for, J good good for Jimmy. For Jimmy. <laughs> I'm That's glad so Jimmy got in there. Like, because he wasn't like that kind of player. But yeah. I watched him, you know, I watched his, he started off as a defensive player. Then he would play at first. Then he started off as a defensive player. And I just watched his you know, his rise. And when I got to Chicago, what I seen was, and Jimmy's confident, and I always say confidence comes from your work. Yeah. Jimmy confidence comes from no one is going to work harder than me. Mm -hmm. I would be damned if someone to work harder than me. So his confidence comes from, he know that he, you know what I mean? Like he know, okay, this guy got this and he got that. Maybe I can't do that, but I know I got something that he don't get right in here. And the, and, the, and the, what the work that I put in. So that's why he feels like in his mind, Jimmy's the great, he's the best player in the world. You yeah. can't tell Jimmy Butler he's not the best player in the world right And not now. from an arrogant standpoint, because, like, he's, yeah. Yeah. he's yeah. the best version of himself. Yeah. 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 And so he spoke He spoke that way, and he had a lot of young guys, you know, that he was dependent on to I – mean, they look at their team. You know, yeah. you got Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero and uh, Kendrick Nunn, they play a big role, but you got these young guys that you're trying to take to <laughs> NBA Finals versus LeBron James and Anthony <laughs> Davis and the Lakers, like Rondo and, like, these guys. Like, they shouldn't even have a chance Yeah. if you look at it on paper. But Jimmy spoke that confidence into them. Obviously, you know, led by the leader, you know, Eric Spolstra and UD as well. But Jimmy spoke that confidence into his guys, and they believed, and, and they, got, and, they and had what, a chance. And, and what's crazy, too, the last part I'll say is that it never was from a place of arrogance, and it was never from a place of, oh, we're better than them, and, like, like talk and trade. He never gave them like bulletin board material, right? It was just everybody kind of watched him, like even from the Lakers side, I don't want to speak from them, but just from like the media side or like the other team side, you look at him like, yo, he, they really believe in themselves. Like that's and it. it. And it wasn't like it was bulletin board material, but it was from a place of like, if you don't go out and do your job, you will lose. Yeah. Because they actually believe in what they're saying. They're not just talking to talk. You know, yeah. he, Jimmy just made it hard not to want to root for him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. It, it was awesome. Um, but, but your guy, but, UD, was amazing when he took over that huddle. Yeah. He lost it. Whoo. That was fun. Um, <laughs> he said he lost it. <laughs> he lost it. I was like, <laughs> he said he lost that was like James Jones. Oh, yeah. Yeah.
champ. Who was it like, like having during champ those and James, uh, champ and UD on the same team? Oh wait, champ, UD, Shane Battier, uh, man, Ray <laughs> Allen, like bro. Y'all had some, y'all had some like buttoned up vets, man, right? We had, listen, we had some real grown. Grown man. man. Like, you know, like real, I mean, like it, on a plane, you know, like you guys know, we're on a plane sometimes, it's multiple things going on on the plane right Yeah. Up next on Road Trippin'. And we had, like, we had to put in a rule, like, yo, anybody who lose, I want my money in 48 hours. But a lot of times on our plane ride, we would sit down and have conversations that you don't normally have. Yeah. Like, let's sit down and talk about money. Okay, yeah. what are you guys doing with your money? James yeah. Jones was somebody who did his own finances. Yeah. So like we sat down and had adult conversations. It wasn't just always playing cards or always listening to music or whatever. It's sometimes we had real adult conversations on that team, and it was man, I loved it. I loved being able to soak all that knowledge up. Rashard Lewis was on the team, you know, another yeah. vet. Like yeah. we had some real dope. I, I was, I was, I honestly, so I was so mad. Okay, let me not afraid mad. So uh, Fizdale calls me right. I just finished in uh, Utah, had a solid year there, kind of re got my body healthy or whatever. Fizdale called me and was like, this was the same year that Brown was a free agent. He was like, Hey, Richard, man, like we really could use you, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, come and, you know, back up Braun and come. And I'm looking at that. And I looked at your roster. Like, I knew Rashard. We were the same, like, year out of high school, McDonald's All-American. You, Braun, I was like, man, that just looks like a fun veteran team, yeah. whatever. Then y'all signed Danny Granger. And then, bro, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, shout out Danny's my guy. But I'm saying, then y'all signed Danny Granger. And I was like, damn. And then Braun left. And I was like, you know how mad I would have been if I would have signed there and then Braun would have up and left. Right. And so I ended up going to, where the, where the hell did I? I went to Dallas. But like, just watching your team from afar, like, there was like conversations of like, hey, you can come be a backup, like, veteran minimum guy. And it was like, you guys look like you just had such a good, veteran group that's why i felt bad for mario chalmers right yeah, that's why i yeah. felt bad for him but y'all y'all look like y'all not fun in a way that like was like the cleveland fun that was different right it yeah. was more of like it was fun from different. like you learned a lot yeah you know what it was, <laughs> it was i'm glad different. you brought up mario chalmers so like the one thing is too when you got a veteran group like that that means these guys has made a lot of money from the game of basketball yeah so their pockets is a little and so when you're gambling on the plane it's a different level of gambling mm -hmm. so mario will you hang on hang on hang on hang on because you guys all know what that means, people like me, we don't know what that means. So what does that mean? Well, okay, what's so a different playing level of games are uh, Bure or um, what's the, the other game? game? Uh, guts. Guts. Oh, guts. Guts is right? dumb. These, these games, Bure and Guts. So, you know, these games start off very friendly. Hey, $20 in a pot, everybody put in. Hey, $100 in a pot. Hey, $200. It just go. But when you're playing with guys like Ray Allen that have been making money since he got game, when you're playing with <laughs> Rashard Lewis that have been making money since he's coming out of high school. One of the biggest contracts in the NBA, yeah. Right? When you're playing with LeBron James, who, you know, you, we all know. When you're playing with, <laughs> I got a little coin. You know, when you're playing with these veteran guys and you like Mario Chalmers and you're getting beat over the head, and it's like, and we had, like, we had to put in a rule. Like, yo, anybody who lose, I want my money in 48 hours. <sighs> But no, hours. but you okay? So well, I, what's we don't, that money? No, tell it's them. not twenty dollars. No, God. What? So Boo Ray is a game that like the legendary <laughs> stories as are numbers between like on a total plane flight, like real idiots between fifty <laughs> and hundred grand, like super stupid. Yeah. So funny story. My trainer with the Nets, oh. he said that on a trip from New York to L.A. because he used to be a trainer for the Knicks, like John Starks won like fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars and was like yo, like, I'm going to go buy a brand new Range Rover. But this is why the gambling gets a little out of control is because everyone knows, oh, we got a six-hour flight back. Right. So, like, it don't matter if you go on a West Coast trip, like, you might win all the money there. Right. But, like, he said that, like, every bit of the trip working their way back, then ultimately going back out east, he lost it all. And he said he wasn't no good for, like, a yeah. week. It's the worst team camaraderie that I've ever been a part of. <laughs> Like, Gambling it was at a point airplane? where me and UD had a meeting with each other. We were trying to get out. It was like we were in a game. <laughs> we was like, how do we get out of this? Because I'm getting my, I, I literally, one year, I literally lost for two months straight. My oh. financial advisor called me and says, there's something I need to worry about because yeah. I'm seeing a lot of deposits come out. <laughs> <laughs> Cash deposits. Well, okay, okay. No, not you, because I don't want you to tell, like, your business, wink, but I want you to tell what's the most you saw somebody lose in a game, and you don't have to say that person's name. Most I've seen someone lose uh, in like one game. Are you talking about just a, a just like a trip, like a trip, like if you're going like not one, like one hand, because you know I know we yeah. can get it. Correct? I mean, we're in a hundred thousand, so easy. 
Like, it's, it's easy. In one trip. Listen, oh, yeah. let me tell you something. And then, like, when I was in Chicago, this is another one by Chicago. So I went to Chicago. Me and Jimmy, Jimmy don't gamble. I don't, I'm not a big gambler, but I do it for camaraderie. Yeah. So me and Jimmy, we was going on a two-week two week road trip, and Rondo is a shark. Shark. He a gambler. Rondo is one of those guys that he could probably count all the cards. Like, he ain't, he shouldn't play. He's too smart. So we were gambling Even in with cards? them. Yes. And Jimmy <laughs> said, yeah, Jimmy said, D, how much money are you going to bring? I said, are we going on a two-week trip? You know, man, I feel like I'm going to bring a lot of money. I was like, I'm going to bring 50000 Yeah. Okay, I can lose 50000 for this trip. I mean, not lose, but, you know, Yeah, I lose. yeah, like, you're not See, going... that's why you and I are different on that game cube. <laughs> I I think I'm going to win it. Yeah, but you got to know, like, I can lose this and be okay and sleep good at yeah, night. Yeah, it's like Vegas. You, you only right. take what you you're take comfortable with you, you lose. Right. Like, not so I was like, this will a, a last me two mentality. weeks. Because when you gamble, you don't just gamble on a plane. Sometimes you gamble in a hotel room. Sometimes you get, like, late at night. Like, we, when we... You when go to New Orleans. You go to yeah. New Orleans. You, go, you gamble a lot. Yeah. And let me tell you, I lost fifty thousand dollars within two hours on the plane ride. Oh. We didn't even get to the city we were going to, and you know who else lost it? Jimmy Butler lost as well. So we, that was our. Uh, we was like, well, thank you guys. I hope y'all enjoyed us for the year. Uh, we gonna go over here and sit in our seats. You wanna know one of the Cardinals? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one of the Cardinals. Channing, you can jump in because Channing never. Channing's gambled. back. Channing never gambled. Channing ain't gambling. Channing, Channing, got his money. Dog. Oh. Yo, Jason, I, Kyle, I J did gamble. Do you know Listen. what the worst thing is? Because there's rules. There's so many like random rules that people don't know. Jason Collins did this one time. Like we were playing poker. He came in, put his money, pull his money out, played a couple hands, then would put his money back in in his pocket. Mm -hmm. Then like when we go around again, you got Annie up again. He would take it. And we're like, dog, just leave your money <laughs> out. Leave like, your yeah, money, out, money out. This dude, he won. A, like he played for probably like. 30, 40 minutes, but then won, like, maybe one of the bigger hands. And it was only probably, like, let's say, like, five grand, right? So he won that. And he was like, all right, guys, I'm out. And I was just like, wait, wait, no, no. Tell no, him. No, no, no. No, 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 no. You Once don't get you to do in, that. You in. You can't get out. Mm -hmm. You can win big no, and be like, oh, I just won. You got to gamble now until all that money is gone. You cannot yeah. <laughs> walk away from the game once you start gambling. And that's why I said I want it out. How much money... Have has somebody get like, hey, listen, hey, let me, I'm just gonna let, let me get five, let me 